pretty much. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so if it's undersized, it won't be as effective. It's always better to buy a larger filter than needed. So the first type of filter I'll talk about is sand filters. And these are the oldest and most common types of pool filters. The filter tank is filled with a specific grade of sand called number 20 silica sand. I don't know what that's, that's, that's what it's called. Yeah, it seems legit. <laughs> yeah, it seems legit. It seems legit. Which is available at most local hardware stores. Look at that. <laughs> or sand and gravel yards. So water enters the tank and is pushed down through the sand, which traps dirt and debris. Then uh, the water travels all the way down to the bottom of the tank, where it enters the laterals and then is returned back into the pool. And sand filters are capable of filtering particles about 20 to 40 microns, microns, I think that's how you say, in size, which technically makes them the least effective among the three pool filter types in terms of the particle size that it removes. But they are the easiest to maintain, requiring backwashing or cleaning to remove dirt from the filter when the pressure gauge has a reading of eight to 10 PSI over the startup reading. <laughs> so technical. I know it is technical. <laughs> Eventually, a uh, backwash will no longer uh, be able to remove the buildup and the sand particles will become smooth and they won't be able to trap debris anymore. And then you have to replace the sand in your sand filter. <laughs> um, yeah. And then on average, this is required about every five to seven years. So every five to seven years, you have to like replace the sand in the filter. That's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, me either, me either. I didn't even know if you put sand in there. <laughs> I mean, I, I did know that, but just, that's just so much work. Yeah, that is a lot of work that like, you gotta worry about redoing that like every like, five to seven years like that's not the, that long no the pool's not even fun anymore yeah it's like i gotta i gotta maintain it like i just want to swim yeah <laughs> uh but and it can also be much sooner so it might not even be five to seven years it can be much sooner for if you have an undersized filter so if your filter is too small it has to work harder um the sand probably needs to be replaced when more frequent frequent backwashing is required and it is difficult to maintain filter pressure at a normal level or clear up pool water problems. So I guess if your pool's getting dirty faster and stuff like that. If you have dogs in the pool or yeah. little kids. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. Or leaves, if you have a lot of trees over your pool. Oh yeah, it gets a lot of, yeah. That's the worst, that's yeah. always the worst. And then like bugs get in there, like yeah. bees and stuff. Gross. It's, it's not the best, it's not the best. Gross. <laughs> um, so some pros are that it's the oldest and most common type of pool filter and certainly the easiest filter to operate out of all three. Um, a sand filter is the least expensive pool filter to buy for your swimming pool. Cleaning of a sand filter is done by backwashing the filter, which is a very easy process. Um, some cons are that the sand filter will filter the pool water to the largest particle size, which is 20 microns, and it wastes water when backwashing a few thousand gallons per season. In most cases, that's a lot of water. Uh, the sand inside the filter should be changed every five or seven years, and it's not too difficult or expensive. So the next one is a cartridge filter. Uh, they are named this because they, contained, they contain a pleated spun polyester filter cartridge that looks similar to an air filter that you find in your car. Yeah, yeah, and also like think of it as if you have a fridge that filters water. Yeah. It's kind of the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. I know, and so, well, my assumption is, I don't know really anything about it, that it's easier to change. Is that the case? Um, I think it is easy, but I feel like the sand filter is probably still like the easiest. Really? Supposedly, that's what they say. All right. Well, let's find out. <laughs> yeah, let's find out. Um, water is forced in the cartridge pleats and it will trap debris as small as 5 to 25 microns. So the other one was 20 to 40. This one's 5 to 25. And that's a significant improvement compared to the sand filter. Um, cartridge filters require very low maintenance, so that's great. <laughs> An oversized cartridge filter only needs to be cleaned about every six months or whenever the filter pressure is 8 to 10 PSI over the standard reading. Each time a pool cartridge is cleaned, some of its filtering ability is lost and eventually oils and debris will build up to the point that they cannot be removed. So cartridges do need to be replaced usually every three to five years. 
So yeah, I feel like maybe that is easier. I it's a car train. It's a car train. train. Get out. Don't yeah. worry about going to buy sand. And yeah, that's when I'm like with your fridge. You just like pull it out and push it back. Yeah, in. yeah. So I feel like this is a lot easier. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So some pros are is there's no multi port valve necessary, so plumbing is easier. And with no multi port valve, there is no backwashing, which is environmentally friendly because you don't waste a lot of water. <laughs> And because DE power is not discharged, well, I'll talk about that next. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so excited about the next one you're going to talk about. <laughs> and since there is no multi-port valve, there are no multi-port valve repairs. So less things you got to worry about fixing. Um, cartridge filters, uh, cartridges filter the water better than sand, but less than DE. Some cons are, though, uh, with a single pleated filter inside, you need to clean the filter cartridge fairly often. Uh, with the large cluster type of filter, normally four filters, you still need to clean the filters, but only once or twice during the pool season. And to clean the filter cartridge or cartridges, you open up the filter and take cartridges out and spray them with the hose, which takes like five, 30 minutes. Not too long. Not hmm. too long. Five to 30 minutes is a large gap. <laughs> I know. I don't <laughs> know why they said that. Like five to 30 minutes. I guess like if you have more than one filter. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hosing. That makes sense. Yeah. So then the last type of filter I'll talk about is the DE pool filter. Oh my god, so excited. And DE stands for, if I say this wrong, diatomaceous earth? Something like that. Diomaceous? Uh, yeah, let's 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 hear Google pronounce it. Yeah. Real quick. Earth. Chris knows how to say it right actually. Oh. Because <laughs> he's taking a class on it. On it. Like, okay, let's get Let's see if we can get the computer to say. Yes, please, please. <laughs> we were not pest control. No. No, this is not what I want. Let me see. Oh, here it is. How to pronounce Dionysius. Oh. Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous? Is uh -huh. that? <laughs> Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous. One more time. Diatomaceous. I know it's, I don't see it. Diatomaceous. No, I, that's not how you say it. Why? Why is it doing that? Diatomaceous. <laughs> that's not how you say it. We need to call Chris out. We need to call the helpline. That is so crazy. Diatomaceous. That sounds... Let's see this one. Okay. <laughs> Word box. <laughs> nice. Why is it so? Somebody <laughs> commented wrong. This guy. The animations. That's what people are saying. The animations. This guy said it weird. He said D animations. Oh, let's listen to this one again. Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous. Yeah. Can well wait wait wait. <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing this by the way because it's funny. But it is. Can you tell me what diatomaceous is? This is what I'm so excited about. <laughs> so let me see. I don't know if I wrote that. Let me see. Let me let me search it up again. You didn't. Can I say? Can I say? What yeah, you is? can say. Okay. You can say. I'll let you say. All right. First <laughs> of all, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> let me say the word. Hold on. It's coming. Diatomaceous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or D E. And what it is, is fossilized animals. Yeah, that's horrible. It's fossilized animals. Oh my God. Yes. That's why I was so excited about it because we're currently going through an extinction event. One oh day, gosh. one day we will be, hold on, it's coming. Come on. Diatomation. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's the fossilized remains of tiny aquatic. Aquatic, 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 aquatic. <laughs> organisms. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, That's... I know. All right. <laughs> let's hear the tangent on diatomaceous, but <laughs> let's hear it one more time. Diatomaceous. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'll just say DE. <laughs> so DE filters remove particles that are down to one to three microns in time. So that's a huge difference. The first one was like 20 to 40. The other one was like a little bit better. And this one is one to three. So that's really small. But it can be seen by the naked eye, apparently. Um, because of this, it makes DE the most effective filter type. 
The filter has either fingers or grids that are covered by this fine powder called Animation. <laughs> this powder does the bulk of the filtering. DE powder is usually sold separately from the filter and is added by pouring it through the skin. Uh, like a sand filter, a DE filter must be backwashed when its pressure gauge reads 8 to 10 psi above its normal reading. Uh, backwashing will flush most of the DE powder out of the filter. Your city, apparently, cities might have certain DE disposal requirements. So hmm. you might not be able to just throw it out. Because it was animals. Yeah, you have to avoid backwashing into streams or sanitary sewer systems. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it's like... I was really excited, and I'm not so excited anymore. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it, it's, it depends on where you live, I guess. You have to, like, search it up. Probably um, no rules here. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> backwashing is... And I'll talk about backwashing now because I said it a lot, but backwashing is easily accomplished by shutting off the pump and turning the filter valve handle... Um, to the backwash position. The dirty DE powder is flushed out of a backwash hose, which you have to buy that separately too. Apparently. Jesus. I know. I quit. I know. I'm going to the public pool. I'm going yeah. to the Y. Yeah, to the Y. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then uh, like side mount valve sand, sand filters, DE filters can use a less restrictive slide valve instead of the multi-port valve for backwashing the filter. Some pros, a DE filter has the advantage of filtering the water to the smallest particle size and will keep the water cleaner than a sand filter or a cartridge filter. And this can, this can translate to less pump runtime and less sanitizer needed to keep the water clean and clear. DE is the most superior form of pool filtration. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How many animals have died in filtering yeah, your pool? Yeah, for that to happen. I mean, it does sound like it, it's like, you don't, you still have to do maintenance, but maybe not as often compared to the other ones. But yeah, but it does have ponds. So the DE filter requires, oh, forget everything I just said. It requires <laughs> the most amount of maintenance. Redaction. I know, redaction. redaction. Forget that. Forget that. It requires the most. So after backwashing your filter, you must add replacement DE powder through your skimmer to recoat the grids inside your pool. So I guess just because you have to put more powder in there. And then I guess like where do you even buy it? Do they sell it? Like, you, you dig in your backyard <laughs> and you for scoop some, up the fossils. For some fossilized animals. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, you have to replace the powder through your skimmer to recoat the grids inside your pool filter. With a DE filter, you also need to take the filter apart every six months. So I guess that's really like, come on. I mean, you have to take it apart. Like, no, not happening. Yeah, so yeah, the reason you have to do that is so you can clean the filter grids manually. <laughs> and lastly, it's the most expensive filter. So filter. basically don't. Basically don't. It has the most maintenance. It's the most expensive. This sounds like a no. <laughs> All right, and one more time for the road. Hold on. Diatomaceous. <laughs> one more time. And then... Uh, Diatomaceous. <laughs> perfect. I think we have one more. Hold on. Okay, no, that was it. It's done. done. It's done. So, it's done. so basically, in conclusion, <laughs> sand filters are least effective, but also the least expensive to buy and use. Cartridge filters are the are more effective, but are more expensive to buy and use. And DE filters are the most effective, but the most expensive to buy and use. Uh, I go back to my original statement when I said I never went out of the pool. I know. After reading like about all the filters, I was like, nah. Nope. <laughs> not happening. Not happening. All right. So let's talk about the residential pool. Yes. Specifically. Yes. Specifically. Now, there are actually uh, five different types of pools you could have if you have a residential pool. Concrete, vinyl line, fiberglass, above ground, or wood. How does wood work? Like. Mm. How does wood work? Okay, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get find to out. it. We'll find out. So concrete is the most uh, common type of in-ground pool. It's usually lined with plastic or fiberglass. Reinforced concrete um, is used to make the shell of the pool. And then plaster or fiberglass are used to line the pool to hold the water in. They can either pour the concrete into the wooden frame or they can spray concrete. And there's two types of concrete spray. There's a dry mix called gunite, or there's a wet mix called shot creek. 
Interesting names. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you can get in trouble easier. Very easy with that. So. I know. And you spray it. That's so weird. Yeah, I know. And we'll put a picture. Yeah. Like a picture yeah. of them spraying it. It doesn't look. Like, how would that go like, on? There's like a dude with like a thing up there that's like trying to like trying to stop it from yeah. blasting everywhere. Yeah, because like, how do you even do that evenly? It's, like, it just does not everywhere. seem controlled. Yeah. <laughs> the spray is like a pressure gun of concrete coming out. That's so, scary. Great idea. Yeah. yeah no. Great idea. Okay. I'm okay. sure accidents have happened. <laughs> Now we're going to talk about vinyl line. So vinyl line pools can be in ground or above ground. The frame is usually made of prefabricated panels of aluminum, 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 plastic, steel, or wood. The walls of the frame are then lined with vinyl. And then it's an easier insulation and it's less expensive than concrete. So basically a, a vinyl pool, pool is kind of like a shower curtain. Like, you know, when you like cook a shower curtain yeah. with the vinyl pool, they have a frame and that frame has basically like rings on it and you attach, it's like buttons or rings uh -huh. and you attach, um, depending on how expensive your vinyl pool is, you attach the vinyl liner around Wow. It. Yeah. And that's what holds the water in. That's crazy. I know. It seems like it could be really janky. Yeah. Like I feel like it could break. Yeah. I mean, it just, yeah, yeah I'm not feeling it. Yeah, no, I'm not convinced. Okay. <laughs> fiberglass. Now, fiberglass. Have you ever seen a pool on the side of the road where they're like, buy pools from us? Yes. That's a fiberglass pool. <gasps> oh, my God. I have always seen those, like, on road trips. You know, you just see that, that place that just has all those pools. <laughs> yeah. That's a fiberglass pool. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I'm like, well, I'm never going to look at that the same way again. I know. I'm going to be like, well, that's fiberglass. I thought, you know, like, oh, it's a pool. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> um, so fiberglass can also be in ground or above ground. It's basically a prefabricated pool. So that's why we say you see them on the side of the road. Okay. It's a pool shape already, like the deep end, the shallow end, the steps, everything are already like, made. made. Yeah. And then they dig out a pool size hole and put the frame in and then put the dirt around it. Boom, pool. Wow. But you know what? It doesn't look as janky as the vinyl. Pool oh, really? Okay. I mean, think about it. Yeah, because like the vinyl totally, does look pretty. Yeah, it's really janky. Sorry if you have a vinyl pool. Um, <laughs> no offense, no offense. <laughs> if it's above ground, then they'll usually make a metal or a plastic frame to hold it in. Oh, okay. Yes. That's, that's interesting. I know. I just want to state for the record, like, I hate residential pools, but I really hate above ground residential pools. I've never seen one. I've never what? seen an above ground. Like, I've seen the one you buy from Walmart, you know. Those, yeah, like, those, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But never, like, a big one like that. Yeah, like, I have. Uh, someone... I knew growing up in Virginia, Helen. Why do you hate them? I, oh, because they're ugly. <laughs> they are. No, I don't hate it. Tori, if you're listening, I don't hate you. I didn't like your pool. <laughs> um, That's hilarious. <laughs> I like you, Tori. You're fine. Um, but no, like, it's ugly. Like, you climb up, and then you're on the pool deck. But, like, you can see the frame and all the innards. Yeah. It's just, like, sitting in your yard. And what if somebody falls? <laughs> Oh, no, it has a big fence around Okay, okay, okay. Cool, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... <laughs> what if someone falls off the pool deck? <laughs> it's like just a free-for-all. I know. Yeah, I can see how that would be, like, gross. Because, like, if it's underground, like, you know... You can't see all the innards. Yeah, you yeah. can't see all the weird little grooves and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like, look at this. Yeah, that's... I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that either. <laughs> yeah, I want to see that. Put it okay. in the ground. <laughs> Put that in the ground. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um... <laughs> Now, an above-ground pool can be made from a variety of materials. It is the most affordable type of personal pool. Yeah. It can be permanent or temporary, but it must be placed on ground level. Like, do not try to put your above-ground pool on a hill. You know there are people out there. That will try to do that. Yes. Or have. <laughs> or have. Um, and also, an above-ground pool should never be placed over a septic system. Oh. That's a big one. Why is that? Remember in the septic episode, like you have to have an open grassy area because okay, if yeah. they have to dig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you put your pool over it, they have to they dig. They won't be able to get there. Yeah, they have okay, to take your pool yeah. out. That makes sense, yeah. I would just think. <laughs> Literally, because it's a septic system. Oh. So when it comes to it, this is actually really, we're looking at a picture right now of an above ground pool. It's actually it really good. nice looking. Yeah, that one actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, um, but that's not how they usually look. <laughs> so basically, if you have an above ground pool that is an actual pool with like a circulating filtration system and plumbing, 
it will be inspected. Okay. If you have those cheap blow up pools from Walmart that people use over the summer, yeah. and then they make YouTube videos of them like popping them and like tidal wave comes out, yeah. <laughs> that will not be inspected because it doesn't have any plumbing. There's just a tub of water and that's disgusting. It is. My parents have one and I'm just like, I never want to get it. No, it's so full of leaves and crap after, no. Yeah, it gets so dirty and it's like, there's no filter, so it's just gonna get dirtier. Yeah, there's no filter in those blow up ones from Walmart. So yeah, you'd have to like empty it. Yeah, like, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of water too. Mm -hmm. So the only type of pool that'll be inspected if it's above ground has to have some sort of water filtration and plumbing system. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so who, why would you expect inspect yeah. a Walmart pool? Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about wood real quick. Wood is not very common, and I really don't think you're ever going to see it here in Houston unless okay. maybe like an indoor pool, like someone has a pool in their house because okay. they're rich. Yes, yeah. That money. <laughs> um, it's usually made of redwood, cedar, or teak because those tend to be more like better suited to getting wet. Okay, yeah, because I was going to ask that too. But... Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's coated. Oh, okay. but, you know. Um, they can be above ground or in ground. And then the usually lined with plastic or fiberglass just to make them further waterproof. Okay. Look at this picture though. That looks nice. I know. That is beautiful. Like, it's very like Scandinavian looking. I know. I'll put I'll put the picture in the blog because I would I would buy that. Yeah, I know. It's really pretty. It looks like it the wood pool looks like it is on gonna be on like the side of a mountain where you like Yes. Over. And it's yeah. actually cold outside, but the pool is warm. Yeah, it looks really nice. It does. I did not expect it to look like that. I know, I know. So now, the pool plumbing process. Now, we are going to become the dirt. Okay. We're the dirt now, you see. In the pool. We are the dirt in the pool. <laughs> we are the dead frog floating <laughs> on the top of the pool. Um, and we're gonna take the path that water goes as it goes through the pool plumbing process. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's okay. go. <laughs> so first, there's two different types of like drains that help circulate water through the pool. There's the main drain, which is located in the deepest part of the pool. A private pool can have one or two main drains, but a public pool is always going to have two. Okay. You know the old urban legend of kids like getting sucked into the drain and drowning? Yes. Yeah. Does that happen? I think so. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why two is actually the safest. But the real reason is, is anything can get sucked into the drain and clogged it. Clogged yeah. it. So if you have two drains, you at least always have that water moving. And also if you're not getting things sucked into the drain, if you have two drains, because there's no pressure or well, there is pressure, but you know, you have another drain to offset the pressure. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. So basically water sucked into the main drain and sent through the rest of the pool plumbing system. At the same time, you have what's called a skimmer. Yeah. And the skimmer is the same job as the main drain, but it skims the pool off, excuse me, the water off the top of the pool. So you have the drain getting the water in the pool, and then the skimmer is skimming the water on top of the pool. Okay. Right? Then you go into the pump. So once you've been sucked up by the main drain or the skimmer, you go into the pump, and there's a... A uh, strainer basket in the pump. You know what a strainer basket is, right? Like when people open, yeah, and there's like snakes and, and crap in there. One time, Josh, one of our inspectors, thought there was a snake and it was just a football. I remember that <laughs> because <laughs> he saw it like just in the it. cover. Yeah, he walked up to the pool drain cover and he could see like black scales. Like, <laughs> and he took a picture and he's like, "I don't want to open this." And we're like, "You won't do it. You won't do it because we are a very supportive and humane company." <laughs> You won't do it. <laughs> and he did, and it was a football. <laughs> it was a football, which is hilarious. It's like, <laughs> you shouldn't have sent us the first picture. Because <laughs> now we're like. <laughs> he set himself up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the strainer basket is where you find the dead frogs. Yes. And all that stuff. Toys and all that. Yeah. Bro, poop. Oh, God. Yeah, poop Ew. ends up in the strainer basket. Ew. <laughs> So from the pump, it goes into the filter. And the filter uses gravity. It uses a centrifugal force to separate clean water from the dirt and debris. From the filter, it goes into a heater. Now, not all pools have a heater. Yeah, yeah. Only the fancy people have the heaters. Right? They're, they're so nice. Right. Do you really need a heater in Houston? I mean, I feel like sometimes, sometimes pool water is just, like, so cold, even though it's hot outside. Like, it's hard to get in. Yeah. But... It's not too bad because, I mean, you get used to it. Yeah. You just got to swim around. 
Our neighborhood pool is only four feet deep, so it feels like bath water all the time. Yeah, ours is like it only goes five feet deep. I'm like, where's the where's the action? Where's yeah, the where's the where is the action? <laughs> yeah, thank you. So after the heater, or if you don't have a heater, it'll go straight to sanitation. If you do have a heater, it'll go into the heater and then into sanitation. And sanitation is where you get the chemicals. Nice. And then finally, it goes into the return where the water's returned to the pool and the process starts all over again. Nice. I know. It's not too complicated. I know. This process has to be going all the time, though. So it's just happening over All the time, yeah. It can't take a day off. It can't even take a minute off. Because the moment it starts breaking, your pool starts to get gross. Yeah. I mean, green pools are the worst. They are. They're so nasty. And so because there's so much plumbing, you're going to have a lot of pipes, right? Of course. So pool pipes can be PVC, ABS, copper, or galvanized. Although if you have galvanized pool pipes, I would suggest replacing them yeah and then listening to our galvanized podcast to figure out why yes that's our first episode wasn't it i think so it was wow. the first episode it's crazy yeah <laughs> uh pvc piping is actually the best for residential swimming pools some pipes can be visible in the yard but most of the pipes if you have an in-ground pool are going to be buried underneath the ground okay so if you have an in-ground pool and your pool pipes are buried underneath the ground the home inspector cannot inspect them okay he can only inspect the pipes that are visible Okay, so okay, so if you needed to get those inspected, you'd have to call like a pool, a pool company. company. Yeah, because remember, a home inspector can't dig up or move things. Yeah, yeah. So they can only inspect what's visible. Now the pump, I should like, you know, introduce this better. Uh, we're going to be talking about the different types specifically. Right now. Okay. So now we're specifically going to be talking about the pump again. Okay. All right. Pool pump. So the pool pump is what keeps the water moving. It is the most important part of the pool. So if the pool pump can't, isn't working, the pool can't be used. Okay, so that's what's really pushing the water around. Yes, like, so exactly. The whole process. You could probably have a slight malfunction in the rest of the pool plumbing, but if your pool pump isn't working, you really shouldn't be swimming. It's not safe. Because it's not cleaning. Yeah, water. it's not cleaning at all. Okay. The pool pump should be inspected by the home inspector for leaks or strange noises. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we've heard some strange noises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pool filters we just talked about. Yes, yes. There's three types of pool filters. Sand. Did him insist his earth? Perfect. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> or DE. And, of course, the cartridge. The type of filter should be identified by the home inspector. Okay, so they just have to say what time it is. What time it is, yeah. And I actually have a long-winded explanation, but since you gave such good explanations, I okay. don't need to. Nice. Yeah. So let's jump right to pool heaters. Cool. The pool heater, like I said, it's not required. You don't have to have a pool heater. It doesn't do anything for sanitation or general maintenance. It just heats the water. It just makes it nice. It just makes it nice. <laughs> Um, there's many different types of pool heaters, but they all pretty much, like, they basically all work the same. Okay. They can be natural gas or propane. Um, electrical heaters do exist, but they usually are only used for smaller systems, like jacuzzi systems. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. The heater, uh, during your home inspection, the heater will be turned on by the inspector to see if it works. Okay. Makes sense. Pretty basic. Now, there's some other components that can be inspected if they're present. Just note, you don't have to have these things in your pool to have a working pool. Okay. But if you do have them, the inspector will look at them. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So um, timers, ti like basically do you have like timer for your heater or timer for your lights or something okay. like that. Um, remote controls for your pool cover. Right. Fancy. Air blowers, pool cleaners, if you have one of those pool Roombas. Oh, the thing that is like you float in right Yeah. Now. Yeah. The pool Roomba. Uh, lighting, that. covers. And then if you have diving boards, ladders, or slides, you're just going to check those to make sure they're safe and not, like, bruised and stuff. Yeah. Because they get bruised really fast. Yeah. So here's the thing. We live in Texas. And in Texas, they have required safety barriers that you are supposed to have around your pool. But ECs. Does any – have you ever seen a residential pool with any safety barriers? No. No. Never. Never. Ever. So basically, there's a loophole here. You are supposed to have these, right? So the home inspector has to write up in the home inspection report that you don't have them. But also, there's no, like, safety pool inspector, so you never 
you know, when you're not going to do anything yeah. about it. Really. Yeah. So if you're a buyer and you're buying a pool and it's like on the home inspection report, they write, well, they have no safety barriers. You don't need to panic. Yeah. No reason to stress. Yeah. Nobody has that. Nobody has I've that. I've never seen that in my life. The only time I see it is like my HOA pool has all the required safety barriers oh, and yours yeah. probably does too. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because it's an HOA pool and there's a lot of liability there, yeah. but personal pools, not so much. I will say this. If someone drowns in your personal pool and you don't have the safety barriers, adios. Adios. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. are going to get sued. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to have it. You're supposed to. So watch your kids, people. Watch your kids. Make sure they don't drown. Yeah, seriously. Teach them how to swim. It happens. Yeah, it does happen. All the time. Like, especially with toddlers. Yeah. Toddlers are just like... They're just like, ooh, cool. Let me just walk in. Yeah, let me just like... I feel like they just walk into the pool. Like, they don't even stop walking. That happened to my little sister when she was little. She like just went in and then my mom seen her just like head down in the pool. <gasps> but she was fine. She was fine. Oh, but they had to gra like, grab her. I was like, oh my god. Watch your kids, people. <laughs> Watch your kids, yeah. <laughs> Moral of the story. <laughs> All right, so here's the required safety barriers. And this is, as I read this, you will realize well, why no one does this, because it's a lot of work. Four foot high barrier around the pool cannot be chain link, cannot have any gaps or opening greater than four inches. The pool gate must have a self-closed, self-latch, and it must have some sort of lock on it. If the pool boundary is at a door or window, then the door or window must have an alarm. I want to stop there for a second. In houses from the 70s and 80s, some people did build their pools right up to the back door. Have you ever seen that before? I don't think so. Like you open the back door and there's just a little bit of deck and then and the pool right there. So that, they don't make pools like that anymore, but it used to be a thing. Wow. And it used to be sometimes your window would overlook the pool because the pool would be basically the whole backyard. Yeah. And like I said, they really don't do that anymore. But if that's the case, you are required to have a window alarm and a door alarm that goes off every time someone opens it. Okay. okay. And then elevated pools should have a ladder that can be removed or locked. And some HOAs, cities and counties have may have extra requirements for a private pool that you have to follow. And then, like I said, the inspectors have to know when these things aren't being met. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. Okay. But I mean, it's a lot of rules. There is a lot of rules. Like, for sure, for sure, like, the neighborhood pool, like, yeah. has a gate. Yeah. It's a Reliability. Yeah. yeah. Like, our pool, it has a gate. You put a code in, and then you have to reach around and pull up a lever. Oh. And then push it open. And actually, you reach around, pull up a lever, turn the knob, and push it open. Ours is broken. You just <laughs> push it it's really hard. Like there's a key, but like it doesn't work. Like you just push it and it opens. That's so funny. I know. I'm gonna throw my apartment complex in the bus. <laughs> you didn't say where you live, so we're good. We're good. You didn't give your address. I know. <laughs> but the reason they do that with the HOA does that is because they don't want any liability if one of the neighborhood kids sneaks into the pool and drowns. That makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, that's your fault if it's not working. Exactly. And, it, and especially with little kids and our gate, like the lock and everything and the lever to pull, it's way higher than four feet. So like so no little kid would it even be able to reach it. Yeah. And it, I'm five, six and it's kind of inconvenient even for me. Oh God. It. Yeah. So uh, my HOA is serious. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same HOA that was like calling the cops on people for swimming in the pool. Mm -hmm. So during the quarantine. Yeah. We talked about that last yeah, time. Yeah. Me too. That was hilarious. Oh, uh, what a bunch of nuts. <laughs> Okay, so pool chemistry, uh, inspectors, track inspectors, so like your normal home inspector is not required to test the pool chemistry. Uh, that should be done by a professional pool company. However, a home inspector can note that the uh, pH level is off if they observe the following signs. So corrosive water, eye irritation, the walls are stained or the metal ladders are stained. Um, the pool is green, obviously, or, or cloudy. The filters aren't working. Um, there's no circulation. Uh, or if your vinyl lining has wrinkles, all of those are signs that your pool chemistry is off. Okay. So if your home inspector sees that, they'll just make a note that say like, clearly something's wrong with the pool chemistry. You should call a pool inspector. Okay. But the home inspector is not going to be out there like the lifeguard, like with the little chemical, you know what I'm talking about? I think so. The chemical, like those two little test tube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Home inspector's not doing that. So, okay. Um, 
typical issues with Texas pools, or let's just say typical issues with all pools in general. Yeah. Maintaining water chemistry, maintaining the liner, maintaining the decking. By the way, pool decking can quickly become a death trap oh when it gets God. wet, you know, because it gets like slippery. That's why they say no running. Yeah, that's why they say no running. Yeah. Yeah. I actually almost slipped at the pool last time I went. <laughs> yeah, because you were running. I tried to. <laughs> ECs. Um, a lot of people don't maintain their equipment, so they end up with broken pipes or not clean out their filter, which apparently you're supposed to do like every other day. I know. Uh, or not servicing their pump. The If you have a pool, you should have a pool guy in your cell phone who's coming out to regularly inspect your pool. Yeah, for sure. And in fact, if you don't want to clean your pool, have that pool guy come out and clean your pool. Do that too. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want to do it, Pay someone to do it. If you can afford a pool, you, you should be able to yes, afford this. Exactly. <laughs> if you can't afford the maintenance, and you can't afford the pool. Yeah, because then like your pool is just gonna it's gonna go downhill. So fast. Quick. So fast. Okay. So when should you hire a home inspector or a pool inspector? We kind of touched on this already, but I'll say it again. A home inspector should really only be hired to inspect the pool during the option period or during a pre-listing inspection. They really should not be used to inspect a pool in a non-real estate capacity. So basically, if you're living in a house and the pool breaks, call the pool company. Yeah, the home inspector won't be able to yeah. do anything about that. Yeah, he should only be inspecting the pool in like a real estate capacity. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oops. Sorry. No worries, no worries. You can cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've already kind of established that pools are expensive, but let's lay down some numbers. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please inform us. All right. This vinyl pool for tears, and this is all averages, so don't come at me. Wait, you didn't you know. Pool. Yeah. <laughs> These are averages. Listen to this. Tears in your vinyl pool can go from $20 to $1,700 to fix. That's a huge range. I know. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> I know. Popped beads. And the popped beads are like the hook things where you hook the oh, vinyl around, around the pool. Okay. They go from $129 per 150 feet. Jesus. It's kind of expensive. Yeah. yeah. The protective shield, which is what you can put on your vinyl liner to kind of prevent it from tearing, is $530 per 150 feet. Yeah. I don't trust that vinyl liner. No. <laughs> I don't want... I feel like... If you put your feet on that, it's gonna feel slick and slimy. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, I feel like it would feel slimy. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Slippery. Yeah. The good news: fiberglass needs fewer repairs over time. The only issue with fading is, or excuse me, I give it away. With fiberglass is fading. Okay. And that costs about seven hundred dollars per square feet to kind of repaint your fiberglass pool. Okay. So, so you have, have to do that, like if it starts baking. No, it's just ugly. Oh, it's just more it like looks down. Thing. Get out. Yeah, I mean, I do it. Yeah, <laughs> if it was necessary, if I was rich. <laughs> <laughs> so concrete for cracks, uh, it's about sixty-five dollars per linear foot. For hollow spots, and that means where the concrete was poured, but it kind of formed an air bubble during pouring, it's about seven hundred to a thousand dollars per 150 square feet Ugh. and that really stinks because that yeah. is not your fault yeah i was gonna say like that's not the person who has a pool spot and no. they gotta pay that much money for yeah. like the mistakes they made when they were making the pool i find that incredibly obnoxious um and then there's an, also an issue called pop-ups and this happens when pressure builds up underneath your pool from air from all that pool plumbing produces a lot of air yeah and if it's not sealed correctly it can make pressure underneath your pool and start pushing your pool up. Yeah. That's scary. I know. So that can be prevented by installing a pressure relief valve during construction. Okay. So you can't do it after the fact, you but have it, to, you have to do it before construction. I do it. Yeah. It's only 14 bucks. Okay. Yeah. I definitely yeah. do it. Save you a lot of headache. Yeah. <laughs> so what about plumbing leaks for um, damaged equipment? And your plumbing system, it's about a thousand dollars, starting about a thousand dollars or more to fix. Small leaks, thankfully, are only about twenty bucks. Not too bad. And then leak investigation, just to get the pool guy out there, it's about three fifty, starting at three fifty. I know. Ah. Why, you remember why I said I did not want a pool? I know. Now after all this, I'm like, I would definitely not get a pool. I feel like I'd be stressed. I'd be anxious about it. <laughs> I'm just going to rent the Airbnb that has the pool. Yeah. Next time we go into quarantine, 
just planning because I feel like it's going to happen again. I'm going to rent an Airbnb with a pool. Yes, do that. <laughs> um, yes, okay, do that. So, so let's talk about a above ground pools. Okay, cool. Uh, a little bit cheaper. The liner patches for the above ground pool is about 10 to 20 bucks per patch. To get a new liner for your above ground pool, it starts at about $300, but it can go up. Okay. To replace the wall of your in-ground pool, so the thing that's holding up the pool, goes from $1,300 to $1,700 or more. Ugh, that's so much money. I know. <laughs> and finally, to replace parts of the frame, because it's usually like a wooden or metal or fiberglass frame, uh, 12 to $30, depending on what material you have. So not too bad. Yeah, compared to everything else. Yeah, compared to the wall replacement. Bleh. Okay. So that's pools. Nice. I'm just, do you Definitely. have any? I know. Uh, I have a great picture that we're looking at of a bunch of like white guys who put a tarp in their truck and filled it up with water and they're calling it a pool. Yeah, I'm going to put that in the blog. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the blog. You'll see it. Yeah, Don't yeah. Don't worry. So do you have any questions for me? So if somebody wants a pool inspection, it's not included in the regular home inspection. Oh, the price? Yeah. Oh, that's a really good point. No, you usually do have to pay extra for a pool inspection. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and it just depends on the company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions? No, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Well, that was exhausting. Yeah. I feel like I I feel like a little stressed out. After. I know. I feel stressed out too. I'm like, oh my God, now I never want to get my own pool. I know. And like I, uh, did you ever watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? No, I, don't I expected you to say no. I know. You just disappoint me left and right. <laughs> I know. So, in that movie, one of the key points is Clark Griswold is going to get a bonus from his company, and with that bonus, he's going to build a pool. Okay. And this takes place in like the 80s. Okay. So, remember, it's a huge deal in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And he ends up, I can't remember what he got, it was like a gift card or something. And he loses his mind and has a mental breakdown. Like, that's a key, like, subplot in the story oh of this God. movie. So I think about that every time I teach this the pool class. I think of Clark Griswold, like, wanting his holiday bonus so he can build a pool in his backyard. <laughs> and that's so true, though, of many Americans. Like, with the stimulus check, how many people do you think? Probably a lot of people were like, let's get a pool. Let's get a pool or a boat. Yeah. <laughs> or a boat. Yes. Or a TV. Yeah, for sure. So okay. people do that though. They get, they come into money and the first thing they do is like, let's get a pool because they only think of the upfront cost. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing too. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people only think about like the getting cost and not the cost like to maintain it for the rest of your life. Like, the rest of the time you live there. Yeah. And then around like, well, it ups the resale value of the house. Not if everything's broken. Right. <laughs> Chris and I won't even look at a house at the house. Pool. Mm -mm. I hate it. I wouldn't. I'm like, no, I don't want your nasty. It's full of skin cells. It yes. is full of pee. It probably has teeth that your kids lost and <laughs> kids always lose their teeth in the pool. Uh. Full of dead birds and frogs. Yeah, I know. I don't want mm. it. I don't want and it. And it's just a lot of work. Like, it is. It's a commitment. It is. It is a lifestyle choice. Yeah. If you can do it, Kudos to you. If you are Lady Gaga <laughs> and you can afford your ten thousand a day rent, congrats! Congrats! <laughs> you but made it. <laughs> until I'm at that point, yeah, I don't. The know. only way I get a pool is if I can afford the pool and just to pay somebody to do everything for me. Right. I wouldn't want to do anything. Yes. Just for me. <laughs> when I buy my mansion in Calabasas, California. <laughs> <laughs> Next to Ellen DeGeneres and yeah. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Then I will get a pool. Perfect. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it credits time? It's credits time. So music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incom Tech. Source credit is ThoughtCo and SwimmingPool.com. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know. Check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston or Facebook and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas and on TikTok, baby. Yes. What is our TikTok? Um, let me check. Let me check. Oh I'm God. following We're it. losing time. I know. Let me turn off my sound because I'm not going to open TikTok <laughs> and then it's just going to like blast something at me. Let me see. I think it, let's see. Is it Home Inspector underscore Texas? Oh, it's, a, it's really easy. It's just Houston Home Inspector. Houston Home Inspector. That is our TikTok. Follow us on there. We have 7,000 followers on TikTok. Yes. So I'm actually pretty close to getting that mansion in Calabasas. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, our next episode is grading and drainage, Ooh, which okay. is really appropriate because we're going to get hit by a tropical storm on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I'm excited for that. Cause I always hear Chris talking about grading and drainage, grading and drainage, like all the time. You're excited about the podcast, not the tropical storm. Yeah. The podcast, not the tropical storm. <laughs> Let's clarify there that. for a second. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I too am excited about grading and drainage and not the tropical yeah, storm. No. But the reason I bring up the tropical storm is because it's a very good example of how grading and drainage does not work in the city. Yeah, we're about to see hella flooding. Hella flooding. <laughs> Get your boats, people. Get, Get your, your jet skis out. Get the jet skis, your canoes. Houstonians are so funny. I know. I remember like seeing so many videos of people just on little, little boats. The jet ski. You never use a jet ski. Until <laughs> that reminded me, like when Hurricane Harvey happened, uh, my fiance's brother was stranded. His dad picked him up on a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only way he could. It's like the pinnacle of Houstonian life, right there. I know. It's like, oh, you have a jet ski? Yeah, I just keep it around for the flooding. Yeah, <laughs> it comes in handy. It comes in handy. Oh my god! If we lived in Colorado, we'd have snowmobiles. Yeah. We live in Houston, so we have jet skis. Makes sense. Makes I sense. think it makes plenty of sense. <laughs> yes. And on that note, I'm Mary. And I'm Lucy. And we're the homegirls. And we'll chat with you next time on Grading and Drainage. Yes, we'll see you guys next <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining us on live. We had a great episode today. It is going to be on IGTV and Facebook, on our Facebook feed. It's also going to be on YouTube if you want to watch the replay. And, uh, oh, the camera's over there. Sorry. <laughs> We're not <laughs> used to the camera being on the other side yet. Um, we'll see you next time for Greeting and Drainage. Yes. yes. All right. See you guys. Stay safe this weekend.